Welcome to the W3 Schools CSS box model tutorial. Think of HTML elements as boxes. In CSS, box model is used when talking about layout. It has margins, borders, padding, and content. Let's take a look at an example. Here is a simple page showing how the box model works. This is our box. It's a div element that's been styled to look like this. Let's look at the different areas of the box. This area is called the content. It's where text and images appear. I can increase the size of this area by setting the width property. Let's try setting the width to 400 pixels. Now the width of the box has changed, but the height as well. That's because we haven't specified a height. So the content will take as much space as it needs. Let's try specifying a height. Now there's additional space beneath the text, since we specified the height of the content. This area here is called the padding. It clears an area around the content. The padding is always transparent. Let's try changing the size of the padding. Now I remove the padding and you can see that the text is touching the border. Let's give it some space again. This area is called the border. The border goes around the padding and the content. I've set the border to 25 pixels so you can see where it is, but this is a bit much. Let's try changing it to 10 pixels. That's better. This area is called the margin. The margin clears an area around the border. The margin is always transparent. Let's try changing the margin size and see what happens. Now the box has a lot less space around it. You can go to W3 Schools' Stride Editor and experiment with these values to better understand how it works. One of the reasons that it's important to understand the box model is so you can set the width and height of an element correctly for all internet browsers. It's important to know that when you set the width and height of an element, you are in fact setting the width and height of the content area. Let's look at an example. To calculate the full size of an element, you must know and correctly set the padding, border and margin. This image is 350 pixels wide. The total width of the box below it is also 350 pixels. You see that the edges of the box line up with the edges of the image. Now let's look at the property values. The width property is 320 pixels. The padding is 10 pixels. The border property is 5 pixels. And the margin is set to 0. Now, looking at these numbers, it doesn't seem like it adds up to 350 pixels. But let's do the math. 320 pixels that's the width property for the content. And at 20 pixels, that's for left and right padding at 10 pixels each. And at 10 pixels, that's for left and right border at 5 pixels each. And 0 pixels for the margin. Now 320 plus 20 plus 10 equals 350 pixels. If we try to change one of these values, like the border, you can see that the edges no longer line up. So, to sum up, the total width of an element should be calculated like this. Width plus left padding plus right padding plus left border plus right border plus left margin plus right margin. And the total height of an element should be calculated like this. Height plus top padding plus bottom padding plus top border plus bottom border 
plus top margin plus bottom margin. And this concludes our tutorial for the CSS box model. Thank you for watching.